They have to learn to speak up for themselves and set boundaries. Sometimes the people that are criticizing the most are literally right next to us. Like, oh, you're going to eat that? Or like, oh, are you sure you want to wear that? These things that can be really triggering. Today, I have Tony Marinucci on the podcast. She's a qualified dietitian and she runs a brilliant podcast called Tips with Tony and a business that helps people build better relationships and mindsets with food. Now, I've wanted to discuss food on the podcast since I started the podcast because food is such a complicated thing that we all have our own private relationship with. And when it comes to psychology of behavior, our mindsets are everything. So I was delighted to speak with Tony, who's such a positive thinker in the space, and I'm sure you'll find a lot of interest in what she has to say. So whether you struggle with your own weight or talking to people about food, or you're an athlete, well, this episode is just full of insights. From fad diets to why I seem to develop diarrhea when climbing mountains, this episode is delightful. And we launch into this episode understanding Tony's background and her issues with food and how that led her into the space. Enjoy the show. When I was younger, I was overweight and insecure, and I thought that quick fixes were the answer, and I thought extreme restriction was how I was going to heal my relationship with food, and a little did I know it was destroying it, and I fell for it. It's more harmful than helpful and doesn't work in the long run. That's why I started my blog, and that's what it progressed to a podcast. I wanted not just to be the warning, like, don't do it. I wanted to be the solution. So I pride myself on providing realistic, applicable strategies and habits and free resources. So yes, you could invest in one-to-one coaching to get there faster and to like really heal your relationship with food and your body. But a podcast is free. And I want people to know that you don't have to do all the fancy things. It really does come down to like simple strategies that can really make a huge impact on your health and happiness. Well, one thing I want to ask is this. What's the most annoying fad diet that's ever come across? I, honestly, the most recent one, I don't know if you're familiar with it. I, I don't know where, if it's only in the U.S., but it's called Octavia. There's been plenty like that in the past, and I'm sure there will be plenty like that after. Octavia bothers me right now. Basically, the concept behind it is putting someone on such a low-calorie plan, 1,200 calories or less, which is considered really unhealthy and not sustainable because it lacks essential nutrients that your body can be able to get. Obviously, it destroys your metabolism because your metabolism will slow down to compensate. I'm totally okay if you want to incorporate like a protein shake or or protein bars or all that. But if you have a program that says you have to have this shake as and especially as a meal replacement, I'm, I'm not a big fan. If you like that and you enjoy maybe a smoothie for lunch, totally fine. Go for it. But if you have to have it, that's a clear sign that it's a fad diet and it's not sustainable. So you have to buy their food. You're told to not eat any sorts of carbohydrates. So you're eliminating all starches, all grains, all fruits. Basically just one meal that's like protein and vegetables. You're basically starving yourself. It's like the phase and then you eventually graduate. But at that point, people are afraid of the foods. They're afraid to even eat a banana. They're afraid to add carbohydrates to their meals and their plate, which we need. Carbohydrates are a macronutrient. They're essential for our well-being. And then, of course, yeah, they lose weight really quickly because when you eliminate, first of all, that many calories, you're going to drop weight really quickly. But especially when you eliminate carbohydrates, Carbohydrates are made up of mostly water, so you're losing a lot of water weight. But then it's not sustainable, it's not realistic, and it's really damaging in the long run. And then you gain the weight back and some. And then the people who do it feel like a failure, and then they try to do it again. And then it doesn't work as effective the second time because their metabolism is destroyed from the first time. And unfortunately, those are the sorts of things that are out there in so many different forms. Yeah, it's a nightmare. And it works for Instagram because obviously if you only eat 1,200 calories, you are going to lose weight. So they can do like a one month transformation of this person. But two months later, your body's fucked. (laughs) That's the thing. Like you never see the aftermath. And that's actually why I used to do like before and after photos. But a lot of the clients that we work with now, it's really like weight loss might be a side effect to what we help them with. But for the most part, we're really helping them heal the relationship with food, find balance, commit to healthier living, develop healthier habits. And so as a result of that, they usually do. If they have weight to lose, they usually will lose some weight or all that. But I don't even have progress photos. When you go to my website, I have a ton of testimonials. But it's all about people speaking from their heart. It's not about what they look like because that may or may not change. And even if it does, when you go to websites that are only showing the before and after picture, it's not explaining how that person got there and how they felt when they got there. So, yeah, you can drop 20 pounds. But if you feel like absolute crap, 
then is it really worth it? If you have no energy, no libido, having issues going, having bowel movements, what kind of quality of life is that? If you feel fear around food when you, you want to go out with friends, grab a drink or order in food, like that's not a lifestyle. And that's the part that I can go on a tangent with this one if you couldn't tell. <laughs> that's the part about Octavia that really bothers me because they market themselves as lifestyle changes. And if it's you can't do it in the long term, it's not a lifestyle change. So call it for what it is. Stop telling people it's something else because then people come to programs like what I provide and what my colleagues provide that are actually genuinely helping people. But then the person can't even trust that we're telling the truth because they were just marketed something that was an absolute lie that looked like it was great. And then they opened up and went inside and it was terrible. Definitely. It sounds so much like multi-level marketing kind of scam kind of thing of like, you just have to buy the product. Oh, it is. That's the other part too. Their coaches could be someone who just like did the program itself. No, it's like the worst of the worst. It's also pretty pricey too. I think it's like almost $400 a month, which includes some of the food and whatnot. But the idea is you could get a, a really great nutrition professional, registered dietitian support for that much, maybe a little bit more, depending on the experience of that person. But either way, at least it's going to be something that's long term and sustainable. Otherwise, you're just basically throwing your money in the garbage. Yeah, people are sort of really against paying for advice from someone if, when they kind of like yeah, buy like the package of the product. It looks nice. It's like all this sort of Instagram worthy thing, but like, it doesn't help you. Not at all. And actually like the coaching and changing. There's a big difference between spending money and investing money. And basically, yes, spending money is like knowing that nothing's coming back as a result of that. It's like a one and done sort of situation, which is totally fine if that's what you want. But if you're really looking for something sustainable, if you're looking for an investment, then it's invest the money now and then don't have to stress about it later. You know, your body isn't going anywhere. We have it for the rest of our lives. So let's work with it rather than work against it. 100%. I guess the issue is that people want to just buy products that kind of work instantly. People will buy loads of books, but not go around to reading them kind of thing. But then if I can buy a product, I've got the thing. Whereas if I go and just talk to someone about how I change all my diet habits, I'm definitely going to have to do like lots of work and stuff. Yeah. What's the most common things that you normally help someone with when they first come to you? What's the main issues for people when it comes to food? So the main thing that I think people come to us that we help them with at first is just changing their mindset around food. A lot of people, whether they've done a diet or just have lived in this world and have watched the news or read something in a magazine or just kind of growing up, you've probably had somebody around you or seen someone go on a diet. Maybe you've tried it yourself. And so through that, you've heard or saw or maybe even believe that there are certain foods that are quote unquote good and certain foods that are quote unquote bad. And it almost like you are a bad person if you decide to eat a cookie versus you're a good person if you decide to have broccoli. And so this idea that who we are as a person and our worth is attached to how we eat is something that we really need to disassociate from. I'll just share kind of what happened with me. So when I was younger, I got teased about my weight. I was overweight and I was really made to feel less than. I was my book is all about the parallels between like dieting, dating, and romantic relationships because I was told at a really young age that if I didn't lose the weight, I would never get a boyfriend. So I really believe that my body, my size, and what I ate and how I showed up in this world was completely dependent on the fact that someone's ever going to love me, but I'm somehow going to be worthy of something. And so I took this belief system with me and I really ran with it. And I know so many people can relate to that. They feel guilt and shame when they have something like a cookie or ice cream or whatever it is because they think it's quote unquote bad for them. And it's like, I can have this, but I can't have that. And it becomes very rigid, and very one way of thinking. And then it puts them on this spiral and it leads to that screw it mindset. They end up binging, emotionally eating, saying, I don't care, but then they don't feel good. So then they jump to one extreme to the next. And the reality is that if you really want to live a healthier lifestyle and feel better in your skin and in your body, then you're going to have to embrace balance and be a little bit more flexible. So the first thing that we help people with is to really help them to understand that they're not good or bad depending on how they eat. At the same time, they want to feel good. You want to have more energy, right? Whether you're athletic or not, you're going to have to kind of show up and you're going to have to focus on things like hydration and sleep. And so it's important to embrace the habits that promote a healthy lifestyle, but it doesn't have to be at the expense of your happiness and it doesn't have to be in the extreme ways because those ways don't even last. So the main thing is to focus on how they want to feel rather than focusing on how they want to look. Do you want to have more energy? Do you want to have more confidence? Do you want to have hit PRs in the gym? 
Do you want to have normal bowel movements? Do you want to uh, be able to go to a social situation that have guilt or shame around food or feel fearful or uh, feel confident in your outfit? Whatever it is, how do you want to feel and focus on the actions required to help you get there rather than thinking that you need to follow a diet or be on a diet or to like do what your friend Susie is doing versus like focusing on how your body responds to certain foods. Break away from this mindset that it needs to look a certain way in order for it to be effective. And then from there, go into habits and small changes. But the mindset is the number one thing because without a solid mindset, it doesn't even matter. So you really need to understand that this is not like a one and done thing. If you have a goal of weight loss, it's not going to be done once you hit your goal. Any results that you're getting, you're going to have to keep putting in that same amount of effort to get that in return. So it really is helping people see that this is a long game. This is not a temporary thing. I said this earlier, like your body is there for you forever and it's been there for you forever. It will be there for you forever. So instead of working against it, let's learn to work with it. Let's learn to listen to it. Let's learn to honor it and treat it with self-care and respect on a regular basis. Yeah, wow. I feel like you end up helping with people with a lot more than just food. Yes. <laughs> Not intentionally. It's just like vicariously, you know, because they have to learn to speak up for themselves and set boundaries. And unfortunately for me, where I got teased about my weight, it wasn't just on the playground with the boys who teased me at school. Unfortunately, it was also at home or family members. And I know a lot of women and men can relate to that, that sometimes the people that are criticizing the most are literally right next to us in the same room as us. So often we're really helping them to be able to even respond to when they have that comment of like, oh, you're going to eat that? Oh, why aren't you eating that? Or like, oh, are you sure you want to wear that? You know, like all of these things that can be really triggering. We're helping people with setting boundaries around that as well. What do you think about things like Instagram and its effects on people? It depends who you follow, right? Especially in TikTok, very similar. If you're following people who are teaching you about body neutrality, that you're more than your body and they're talking about like realistic changes, then I think that going to something like Instagram or TikTok, if you're following the right people, can be an excellent platform, a great support group, an awesome community. At the same time, if you're following the wrong people, the influencers with no credentials, I did this, this is what I eat in a day, so you should eat this in a day and that is going to work for you. Like, no, just because it worked for them, it's not going to work for you. We all have different needs and wants and lifestyles. And so the whole concept, this worked for me, so it's going to work for you. Just click the unfollow button now. (laughs) Funny. Yeah. Do you have a lot of people come to you for trying to diet a lot towards their wedding or something and then realize that there's a lot more to it? So we have an application process. If someone wanted to work with one of the dietitians on my team one-on-one virtually, they would have to apply at tipswithtony.com slash coaching. I'll just slide that in there just in case someone's interested. Its application process is there for a reason. So we have plenty of women who have entered the program who do have a wedding coming up. And I am clear with them that this is just a way for you to feel incredibly confident and beautiful on your wedding day to be focused on making memories and to be present with your loved ones and to enjoy yourself and feel absolutely beautiful because you deserve to. And then also start a new life, a new chapter, living a healthier lifestyle and doing it because eventually not everyone, but a lot of the people who also want to get married, they also are planning to have a family. They themselves maybe grew up in an environment where their mom dieted or their father told them that their bodies weren't good enough and they wanted to kind of not raise children who were watching their parents diet just like they watched their parents diet. So they come to us for that being the pivotal moment or the main thing they're working on, but they also know that it's not going to be done when they um, graduate. So the program I have is a six-month program. And I do that on purpose because it takes a long time to kind of unlearn those like harmful behaviors and learn more helpful ones and develop those habits. People can decide to continue after the six months, but it's a minimum six-month commitment. And a lot of work can get done in six months. When you have focus, support, and guidance, and strategy, you're consistent and you have like that one-on-one accountability, you can really transform your life in six months. So they can have this, I'm getting married in six months, so that's why I want to do it. But I also want to continue everything that I learned through in this program going after the wedding day. That's good. So if you're going to have a wedding next month, you're not the person for them. But if you're planning a wedding in a year, definitely change your mindset. Nice. I think I'm a pretty big advocate for what you're doing. Sounds amazing. I don't know if you've ever had people with this, but I, turns out, 
develop IBS when I'm doing severe amounts of exercise. I've done two ultra marathons and I climbed like the Matterhorn and other big mountains. When you're hanging off the side of a crazy mountain is not when you want to have IBS. <laughs> and yet, no, that's the time when I get it, um, <laughs> which is a nightmare. What is it? Do you, do you mind sharing? Is it constipation or diarrhea or both? Uh, diarrhea. <laughs> Okay. It's probably a dehydration situation, actually. Is it ongoing after? It stops pretty quickly. So that I wouldn't really consider IBS. Yeah. So from about like five hours of like continuous exercise onwards, like really crazy next level just continues forever after that until I stop. Are you having like a lot of like the gel packets? What are you eating or drinking? Water. <laughs> Usually uh, the last ultra bath I did actually end up drinking some other things. Are you taking electrolytes? Mm, probably should be. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you should. <laughs> Especially when you're having diarrhea because you're losing a lot of your electrolytes there. That's just a normal reaction to an extreme sport. <laughs> but IBS is more like chronic. What normally would trigger diarrhea in athletes is like they might have, you need sugar to obviously to fuel yourself. It's the most immediate energy source for the body. But sometimes if you do too much, too fast, too much liquid, so like too much liquid and too much sugar together, it pulls everything into the middle of your gut and then makes you have diarrhea. It's not very pleasant. It sounds like you just need to focus on a better hydration methods. Yeah. Cool. That's good to know. You're welcome. So hopefully I'll let you know next time. I guess I, I didn't use it much because I worked for a company that was selling them and it was just so much sales marketing crap. But actually, when it comes to your actual high-level athlete and stuff, it's actually when you need it. But obviously, they're selling it to people who are just doing random shit or trying to cure their hangovers. And you're like, no. Yeah, no. Oh, my God. Side story. I was at Bachelorette Weekend a few weeks ago. They were giving out the IV, IV liquid, which are basically for hydration, which really are for athletes, really for like if you're sweating for like an hour and a half or more a day or something like that. But like, I mean, when people are hungover, yeah, you do need electrolytes. Absolutely. But like you have to remember like a bachelorette weekend, like you're drinking all weekend. We had like lots of fried foods that we ate out a lot. Right. So the sodium was, was super high. I go to the back of the packet. One packet has 500 milligrams of sodium. So if we're just for reference, guys, if you have high blood pressure, you're supposed to keep your milligrams of sodium for 1,500 milligrams for the day. If you're, you know, normal, it's recommended to keep it under like 2,300 milligrams a day. Um, but if you're an athlete, you could even go upwards to like 3,500. All I have to say, 500 milligrams of sodium for when I tell you nobody was doing high intensity interval training. <laughs> You know, we were sitting around and drinking all day and eating. I was like, let me just try it. You know, whatever. I almost choked on it because I was like, this is so gross. I don't know how they like this. Like, this is disgusting. But there was no reason why that particular electrolyte packet needed to have that sodium in it. So it really depends on like what you're doing. So electrolytes are awesome. But if you're just sitting there and you're not sweating and you're, you don't need the ones that are like loaded with sodium. But you do. When you do your ultra marathons. <laughs> At the end of it, like, I sort of wiped my forehead. It's just like a solid cake of, like, salt crystals just came off. So I was like, that's a lot of salt. <laughs> one thing I did want to say, so one of the studies we did actually at that the company was that uh, milk is more hydrating than any of those electrolytes. So obviously, never put that in their marketing. I mean, like, that's supposed to hydrate after a night out. <laughs> and it's like, drink some milk. <laughs> and they're like, no, we can't sell that. And also with athletes, that's also very true. Chocolate milk is like the gold standard for athletes because of the carbohydrates and because of the sodium. Yeah, it's just, it's really, it's so funny, right? We have all these like trendy things that we make, but like at the end of the day with your nutrition, this can be really simple. But unfortunately, the media and diet culture makes it so much more complex and it doesn't have to be that way. Yeah, 100%. Just want to sell you things. Nightmare. Okay, so some final questions are... What's one of the kindest things someone has done for you? Kindest thing someone has done for me. Oh, God. There's probably so many. I'm very blessed. Oh, God, that's hard. I feel like I'm giving a crappy answer right now because the kind things I think people do for me are the little things like I'll mention that I'm having a rough day and then my assistant, for example, sent me this really great uh, care package and it's like that was really thoughtful I just think it's the little things you know it's the little things where I'm not asking for anything but people can tell maybe I'm down and then they, they go that extra mile to make me feel special or important so I feel like those are the kind things that 
I think people need to do more of the little things. Definitely. It's nice. Which is why I like asking this question because it kind of gives you little reminders of cool ways that you can actually sort of notice those opportunities. Yeah, it's the little things. It's really the little things. And then do you have any sort of favorite piece of advice that you would like to leave people with? Favorite piece of advice. It's probably not best advice, but it's worked for me so far, which is just do it and then figure it out later. So if it was a good choice, it'll be just a thing to celebrate. And if it was a choice that didn't make the most sense, then just look back on it and you learn from it. So take action first and observe second. Definitely. It's how you make your dreams happen. Well, thank you so much. This has been awesome. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for Tony coming on the show. I have to say during the interview, she just did not stop smiling and giving positive energy. And it's the same on her socials. She's just such a great person to follow. So if you're into food or thinking about it, definitely check her out. You can find her online at Tips with Tony or on any of the socials. And with that, enjoy whatever the hell you're doing today. And remember, if you want to enjoy your life, that does start with enjoying today. So go do something nice. Shh. <laughs>